Okay, hello everybody. What is going on? Hello my friends and welcome. Different kind of day today, guys, for sure. Uh, at least what we're trying to do here on stream. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, which I hope it does, <clears throat> I'll explain in just a moment, but welcome to today's first of two gameplay stream sessions. Although, this first, you know, session is going to be two completely different games. If things do go according to plan here, guys. So welcome, my friends. How are you doing today? Today is Thursday, uh, the 24th of uh, May, 2018. And how are you doing? I hope that I find you well. So allow me to uh, get started and explain with you what you can expect today because today is a little different. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, after over a month of playing... I actually think it's been almost a month and a half now that I'm looking at my schedule here. <clears throat> Today will be the conclusion of Yakuza 6. Okay. So that being said, um, it's pretty exciting for those of us who have been following along the game for quite some time. Over 100 parts in the playthrough right now. I believe it's like I believe the, the it's actually like 24 hours of gameplay up to this point. So, we're going to finish it off today. Why are we doing it like this? Why why is Yakuza on the first stream? What's going on? Why is it so different cuz as you know, I played Yakuza 6 as the nighttime stream for the entirety of the time that I've played it. So you may be very confused as to what's going on. Why are we doing this early today, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, here's why. Last night, I was playing the game, and I was in the final chapter of the game. And as I was playing it, basically ended, you know, got to the end of the time when I normally would stream, and we were in the middle of a cutscene. Now, normally I would just let it ride out, however, people in the stream chat who had played the game told me, Phil, you have no idea, you're in the longest cutscene of the game, it's about 30 minutes long. And I was like, oh shit, well, I, you know, this is not good, I'm not going to extend my stream by, you know, half an hour or longer just to play one cutscene, this is Stupid, plus then I won't be able to finish the game anyway. So, I had a few options. One option would have been to just turn off the whole game and pray for the best. Hope that the game would later on allow me to replay the cutscene and resume the playthrough. I said, I don't want to take any risks. So I actually paused the cutscene. And overnight my PS4 has been on, just on idling here. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to... Finish up Yakuza 6 first thing on stream. From what I'm to understand, we have roughly an hour left. Alright. Uh, this cutscene has to end, then we've got a little bit more gameplay, and then a bunch of ending cutscenes, basically. <clears throat> so there's not much left to go. We're very much near the very end of the game. Maybe an hour here, tops. And then we're going to wrap up Yakuza 6. Alright. Now listen, I understand. Many of you are stream regulars, and you're like, Man, I, didn't, you know, I don't usually watch Yakuza. That's a nighttime stream. Uh, this kind of stinks because I'm not interested in this. I understand your concerns. Listen, this is the end of the game. This is an oddity. I'm only doing it because of what happened, you know, with the timing and everything last night. Okay. So, we're just going to finish this up and, uh, you know, move on. All right. So, Yakuza 6 concluding right now on stream. Maybe an hour. We'll see. Then once Yakuza 6 concludes, I'm going to take a, a, a break. Figure that'll be the perfect time for the break. And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to change all the stream settings. And we're going to play H1Z1. Now, from what I'm going to understand, the game had a patch last night that supposedly fixes a lot of the issues with server connectivity. Then again, who knows? I have really enjoyed playing H1Z1. The problem is I haven't been able to play much of it at all because the server connections are so wonky and in... Uh, not, well, not, not in... Um, <clears throat> Just not consistent. Inconsistent. That's the word I was looking for. Inconsistent. Um, so that being said, how will the rest of today's session go? I have no idea. It could be amazing where I get match after match after match and I'm having tons of fun. Or it could be terrible where, you know, we were sitting around with our thumbs up our butts, right? <clears throat> I certainly don't want to be negative. But at the same time, when two straight days I've tried to play the game and I haven't had much luck, I'm not so sure day three is going to be much different. Okay. Now, if H1Z1 does not work properly, all right, we will play a little bit of PUBG. Why? Because number one, PUBG, the new map, Miranmar, which is the desert map, has fully unlocked today, and everyone can play it forever. 
on Xbox One. And number two, apparently they released some kind of a balance patch. They're saying that the game has been rebalanced. They tried to tweak it to make it better. Um, <clears throat> do I believe that? Considering all their balance patches and, you know, performance patches since December really have not made the game any better, I don't really believe it, no. But we'll see. I want to play H1Z1. That is what I want to play. But if it does not work, you know, what are we going to do, right? Now tonight, I'm also doing a second stream as well. And yes, that's supposed to be H1Z1. I want to basically get in a ton of H1Z1 gameplay today because I was not able to play it the last two days that I wanted to. All right. But again, if it doesn't work, there's not much I can do. We'll do something else. All right. So there you go, guys. Tomorrow, Friday, the 25th of May, a big new release day. We've got Detroit Become Human. I'll be playing this game all day long. Starting on my first gameplay stream, which will be around four hours of gameplay. And then my second stream will be roughly two hours. From all reports, <clears throat> the game lasts around seven to eight hours per run. Okay? You might say, what do you mean by per run? Well, you might not, may not realize this. Especially because Quantic Dream has not put out a game in quite some time. But games that are made by this de dev studio, Quantic Dream, are basically narrative adventures where you shape the outcome of the story based directly on your performance and your choices. So, for example, in my first run, I may make a critical decision that makes one character go one way rather than the other, and that character survives. In a second run, I may have them do something different, and that character is out of the story for the rest of the game. Uh, Quantic Dream is known for these kinds of decisions, and typically, when you buy a Quantic Dream game, you want to play it at least twice to try to experience the opposite decisions of what you did the first time to see how that will affect the rest of the plot line, okay? Um, so we'll see how this goes. I'm very excited. I've not played the Quantic Dream games, obviously, since Heavy Rain a few months ago when we re-experienced that, but before that, there was Beyond Two Souls was the last new one, and that was, what, 2013? So it's been quite some time since we've all experienced a Quantic Dream game, and I'm very excited to see what these guys uh, put out. You know, for this this iteration, they've got quite the interesting storyline this time around. If you're not aware, androids, the future, and androids are basically being manufactured and used as tools by humans. But some of the androids are becoming self-aware, and now they want to basically have a kind of like freedoms, much like uh, what what humans have. They want rights, and the humans are fighting against them, saying, "No, you're just robots. You're constructions. You don't deserve rights." But the androids are becoming self-aware and saying, well, we deserve them. If we're self-aware, then we should be considered living beings and, you know, we want rights. And so I guess it's supposed to be this big dichotomy between do you serve the, your masters or do you rebel and, you know, what are these critical choices you're going to make during the game? Sounds like it could be pretty interesting. The plot itself sounds really cool. Um, so that being said, I'm very excited for Nier Automata start. Nier Automata? I'm reading the stream chat and someone said Nier Automata. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, let's try that again. I'm really excited for Detroit Become Human starting tomorrow. Um, it's kind of funny because Nier Automata is a kind of a, a plot line where it's similar. You have AI, right? AI-controlled androids that are seen as like kind of independent humans, right? <laughs> Interesting. All right, anyway. So Detroit Become Human all day tomorrow. Both streams. I'm going to get as far as I can absolutely in the game. All right. Saturday is my day off. And I know some of you are going to be like, oh, that's why are you taking a day off during new releases, right? Listen, I've been now streaming, as of today's the 8th straight day, tomorrow's the ninth straight day. I need a day away to go grocery shopping so I have food in the house and, you know, spend some time with my girl. You know, these are the things that, you know, it was nice last week I had time away, but now I've been working for 9 straight days. I need to have a little bit of time, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, that being said, Saturday I will not be live streaming, but I will be uploading the remainder of my Ultra Street Fighter 2 videos from last week's final session of the game. I'm done with the game officially. I've uninstalled it from my Switch and everything. Um, so, yeah, uh, that has uh, that is a stick of fork in it. It's done. But the final gameplay of that game will be uploaded on Saturday on, to DSP Gaming when I'm not live streaming. Then on Sunday, I'm going to resume my playthrough of Detroit Become Human on stream, and I will finish the game. I will get my first ending. Then I will probably restart the game to start my second run, okay? I'd like to see what happens. Alternate choices, second run. And then Monday, my stream will be again Detroit, and I'll tr try to conclude my second run on Monday. 
doing the alternate choices to see how it changes things. And then Monday night will be more H1Z1. All right. Then this coming Tuesday, the big premiere of the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. I couldn't be more happy. It's finally coming out. Uh, I'll be playing it to start on PS4, but I've already had offers from people to get it for both Xbox One and Switch as well for me. And if this does come through, it means that I will be playing this collection on other, you know, venture or other consoles as well, so that those who have, you know, other consoles other than PS4 will still be able to play against me. Uh, I'm going to be doing a ridiculous amount of coverage of the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection, including all four of the games that are going to be playing online. I probably will do runs of the, every single game in the collection offline. Um, I'm going to be doing character tutorials and the like for Super Turbo characters, because that's the game I'm great at. But I'll also be doing online lobbies with viewers and fans who can join me and challenge me. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to be tons of coverage of this game. As well as, you know, just a lot of content. There's so much in this collection to explore. <clears throat> I think it's going to be a really fun time exploring through this collection uh, for basically a week. You know, it's, it's out for a week before new releases come out. And I'm not saying I'm going to play it double streams every single day, but I am going to make it my focus. Maybe I'll put in some H1Z1 to balance it out during the course of that week. So expect a ton, <clears throat> okay, a ton of Street Fighter coverage this next week. A wide variety of games and coverage. It should be great. I hope for those of you who enjoy that stuff, you're going to have a ball here on stream with me uh, this coming week. All right. <clears throat> so there you go. All right. That's the rough schedule for the next week, guys. I want to say thanks for, you know, sticking in there. Let's be, let's be frank. There have not been a lot of new releases recently. I mean, we had God of War, and since then there really has not been much at all. So you guys have kind of been hanging around while I'm doing downtime stuff and... You know, doing my best to entertain you with limited content. Finally now, we got a slew of new releases. And in June is going to be no exception. In June, every week, there's multiple new releases. So it's going to be great with E3 coming up, too. Everything's going to be reinvigorated here for the first time in a while. And I'm excited for that, okay? Okay. All right, is there anything else really to talk about? I'm trying to think. The only thing I do want to mention, guys, is that subscribers right now are pretty good. We're almost back up to 400 subs. I think last time I checked, we were at 395. Let me double check here. I think we're still at 395, but let me check. Yeah, we're at 395 subs right now. Um, we need 30 more. If we can get 30 more at any point during the end of this month, so we hit 425 subs, we've hit the sub goal for the month, and I'm going to be doing the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection Master Run Challenge. A 7-8 to eight hour long gaming marathon where I'll be playing the Street Fighter Collections arcade modes of every major competitive game starting with street fighter 2 uh then the alpha series and then th uh, then street fighter 3 there's 11 games on all that have fun arcade mode runs i'll be playing them on the hardest difficulty and attempting to beat them all in one session which could be very daunting because this game could be incredibly cheap at the hardest level difficulty okay so that's really exciting it's something i've never done before there's probably gonna be a lot of rage and a lot of salt and it's something that i definitely want to do but we have to hit the subs goal. So please consider subscribing to the channel this month. Uh, what do you get? What benefits do you get for being a subscriber? Well, number one, you get access to all of my emotes. All right. Number two, you get access to the chat crown badge. You start out with a bronze crown. Then after three months of ongoing support, it goes silver. And then after that, it goes gold for six months, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's two other crowns as well as for ongoing su subscribers and supporters. Um, but in addition to that, you don't have to watch advertisements. And, you know, every once in a while... I'll run an ad. Probably one to two times a day I run an ad for various reasons. You don't have to watch those if you're a subscriber, okay? So please consider subscribing. And, uh, you know, it helps me out. And it'll hopefully rally to make this event happen as well, okay? Fair enough. All right. I really don't want to go insanely long here with my plugs and stuff. So let's very quickly go through the plug segment. And then I'll do some shout-outs for those who've cheered, subbed, and tipped. And then we will... Uh, get to the game. We'll finish up Yakuza. Because I know the bottom line here is, guys, we're not going to have a lot of attendees for this Yakuza stream. I know we're not. Because the, the playthrough itself has not been super popular. So once we wrap this up and I announce, oh, I'm switching to H1Z1, watch, people are going to start coming in. <laughs> I know that's what's going to happen. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for 10 years 
of outstanding support, 10 years of fun gameplay experiences that I have shared with you guys on the internet. That's right, this year is my 10th anniversary being a content creator. <clears throat> a lot of people don't believe it, a lot of people don't even realize it, right? It's been a wild ride. The ups and downs of YouTube, you know, adopting to be more of a live streamer, it's been pretty wild. At the same time, I've loved it. I love doing my, doing my job. Uh, I love this for a living, and I cannot wait to continue doing it, all right? All that being said, you know, thank you for your viewership. Whether it was watching live streams or watching videos on YouTube, you guys are amazing. However, if you would like to go above and beyond, all right, if you would like to be more than just a standard stream watcher and a video viewer, and you would like to contribute in a way to help ensure that I can keep doing this full-time for a living, <clears throat> then... There are various ways you can do so. Allow me to tell you what those are. Number one, we've got Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. This is my monthly Patreon campaign. And if you pledge to my Patreon, you get not only the, uh, the knowledge that you're helping me, obviously, to continue afford to do this, including the cost of games, the cost of electricity, the cost of internet, the cost of equipment, etc. <clears throat> okay? But on top of all that, you earn... Personal perks, which allow you to get stuff back for the amount that you contribute to my Patreon each month. All right. For example, so just some of the perks getting text or verbal shout outs in my YouTube videos for your contributions, being able to nominate and vote on games for special events. Right now, people who pledged to my Patreon last month are nominating games for a Patron's Choice playthrough, which is going to happen probably sometime in June. Excuse me. Um, you can get your questions answered on my bi monthly show, Ask the King. It's a Q&A show, okay? Or you can even get a private Q&A video made where I sit down with just you and your questions and I answer them for around 20 minutes or, or more. Um, people who get this perk absolutely love it. It's the best perk by far. And it's a way for you to finally kind of have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with me about stuff, okay? So all that being said, check it out over at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. You know, thank you to anyone who does support me over there. I want to say thank you. There was someone who actually gave me a new pledge last night. And I do appreciate that very much, so thank you very much. Please give it a look. Number two, we've got the Teespring Shop, ladies and gents. Teespring Shop. What is available there? All kinds of merchandise, including shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, stickers, mugs, amongst other merch. I do actually think there's some pillows and other stuff there. All right. Um, anything you, you, that you see and buy from my Teespring shop. First of all, gives me a nice sizable commission and helps me out. But you get a really cool collectible. All the logos and artwork on those have been designed by viewers and fans. And it's great quality stuff. I can attest to it because I own a bunch of the shirts. And I also own the mug, which I use every single day on stream. So give it a look. And uh, you know, thanks to anyone who does buy something over there. You guys help me out and you get a cool collectible out of the deal as well. right? Uh, last but certainly not least, if you guys are here live on the stream, and you would like to get a shout-out during the stream. Well, there are three methods by which you can get a shout-out. You can either cheer with bits, you can subscribe to my channel, or you could tip me. If you do any of those three things during the stream, I will give you a shout-out. Now, there's two criteria that I want to pass by, and then there's a little disclaimer I want to do, at least for the Yakuza portion of this stream. But let's, let's do the criteria first. First of all, please be as concise as possible. The shorter worded you are, the more brief you are in your shout-out, the higher chance I'm going to read the whole thing and respond to it. If you get cheer and then do a 14-sentence paragraph, I'm probably not going to derail the entire stream for five minutes to read it. Just saying, the shorter the better. All right. Number two, please try to be positive. Please try to keep your cheers, subs, and tip messages on topic and, and not negative or dramatic or toxic. What I mean by that is please, no questions about politics or religion or those kinds of statements. I'm not going to be reading those on stream and cause trouble. Uh, please, I don't want to hear about negativity. I don't want to hear about so-and-so said this about you and this person's insulting you and this and that. Nobody cares. This is not the place for that. Uh, I really don't give a crap what people say about me. If you haven't noticed, if I did give a crap, I wouldn't be here today. Um, I spend more time addressing the negativity than anything else. I just want to play games and have fun. That's all I've ever wanted to do. And that's what I'm here for, to put out a fun, positive, entertaining stream for you guys. So that's why we got to keep those messages positive and not toxic and not drag down the stream with drama and crap. All right. <clears throat> In general, guys, most people do keep their messages positive and the streams in general are very nice. Every once in a while you get a bad apple and I do have to call them out. So the other day we had one or two 
Had to call him out. You know, we take care of it, though. It's not a big deal, and the stream rolls on and ends up being a fun time. So thanks to everyone who does contribute via these methods. Now, if you would like uh, visual recognition for your contributions, well, if you either cheer 50 bits or more, if you subscribe to the channel and hang out for a little bit until the share button appears and you click on that share button, or if you tip me $5 or more, if you do any of those things, there'll be an on-screen animation that will play in conjunction with the, ver the, the verbal recognition I'm going to give you when I give you a shout-out, okay? So it's kind of like visual and verbal recognition combined, which is pretty nice. Now, in particular, I'm about to start playing Yakuza 6, okay? Yakuza 6, to forewarn most of you who have not been here for the rest of the playthrough, insanely long cutscenes. I'm not even lying. What we're going to do as soon as we resume here, there's going to be a cutscene. And it may be 20 to 30 minutes long. And then... There'll probably be some gameplay and then more cutscenes. And we're at the end of the game, so there'll probably be more cutscenes. So we may be we may be watching an hour-long movie here. Like, no lie, it may just be the end of the game. I don't know. Um, so that being said, just for warning all of you, Yakuza is a very different animal from most of the other games that I play. All right? Uh, once it's done, it's done. And then we're going to switch over to action-based combat with H1Z1, which will be very, 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 very different, right? So please bear with it. I understand some of you might not be your cup of tea, um, you know, just to forewarn. Number two, because Yakuza is so cutscene heavy, no, I cannot interrupt the cutscene constantly with shoutouts. So if you guys are cheering, subbing, and tipping during Yakuza, um, apologies if I cannot immediately give you a shoutout for your contributions, simply because I can't interrupt the cutscene and ruin the story. We're going to let the cutscenes play out. And then in between, if there's downtime, that's when I'll do shoutouts. Worst case scenario, if the rest of the game is an hour-long cutscene, then I'll just give you all shoutouts cumulatively in summary at the end of the game. All right? So just to warn you. <laughs> okay. Um, one final thing. I mentioned tipping. And you may be wondering what that is or how do you do it. Because if you are a frequenter of my streams and if you watch a lot of twitch streams you may notice that you can cheer with bits or subscribe to the channel straight through the stream interface but you don't see anything about tips so how do you tip right well there's two ways you could do it if you're watching my live stream right now and you look below the stream there should be a grid of information including buttons that link to my dsp gaming youtube channel and the stream rules but there's also a button that says tip jaw and if you click on that all right um you should be able to go right to the tips page where you can leave an anonymous tip or you can leave your name in a message if you'd actually like a shout out. Um, a shout out for your contribution. All right, as I had already mentioned that I'm going to be doing during this stream. Now, if you don't see any of the information I just mentioned, like looking below the stream, like there's nothing there, you're maybe on a mobile version of the website which doesn't display any of that. And if that's the case, that's perfectly fine. We've enabled a chat command, which is exclamation point tip. If you type that into the stream chat, our bot. We'll post up a link. If you click on that link, that will take you to the tips page where you can leave a tip as well, okay? So two different ways to leave a tip, depending on how you're watching. Sound good? All right. All right, guys. Well, now I think what we will do is let us go through shout-outs for people who have contributed via cheer subs or tips uh, so far during today's stream. Sound good? All right, so let me actually... Scroll all the way down here. And I do want to say, wow, okay, here we go. So, ladies and gents, the cool thing is that there are people who enjoy my content so much. My daily live streams and my on-demand videos. They come by the stream when I'm not even live. They'll come by the channel and they'll leave a cheer, sub, or tip when I'm not even here. Which is pretty cool. So, what I want to say is thank you to those who do overnight leave me contributions. It is much appreciated that you guys keep me in mind when I'm not even live broadcasting. All right? We have two such individuals today. First of all, we had Golden Colts, who did a 105-bit cheer overnight with a party horn emote. And then we had an anonymous dollar tip who asked an interesting question. They said, so if I'm doing the math correctly, I'm doing a tip right now without hitting a button saying that I'm going to pay the processing fee. So in the reality, I'm actually giving you 76 cents instead of the actual $1 that it says in my pop-up message. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Whoever gave me this anonymous dollar tip overnight... That is 100% correct. What happens when you leave me a tip is that there's a processing fee via PayPal. Now, it's different depending on a few factors. Number one, how much you're tipping me, okay? Number two, where you live and how you're paying. 
Because I'm, I'm to understand people in different countries and paying via different methods pay different processing fees. And number three, whether or not you actively choose to eat that processing fee and pay it up front or not. So I'll give you an example. Yesterday, someone tipped me and said, Phil, I'm actively going to eat the, the processing fee so I know you're getting my full tip. That's awesome that people do that, but most people never do. Most people that tip me, they'll say, oh, I want to tip Phil a dollar, and they just hit it, and it's done, and I get 67 cents. Sometimes I get 66. Don't ask me what the why. Sometimes it's different, but it is. It's different. Um, that's how the process works. So a lot of people see me getting all these tips. Like, wow, Phil really got a lot of tips today. Well, in reality, usually I got anywhere from 10 to 30% less than what you guys actually see in these pop-up messages. But it's still appreciated, and I'm still happy for what I get. But, I mean, yeah, that is the reality of the situation, is that what you see in the pop-up message is not always accurate to what I receive. So, yes, the anonymous tipper, you got it right on the head. I received 67 cents for your dollar tip. There you go. Okay, so now let's move on to people who cheered, subbed, and tipped here during the stream while it was live. Let's get some shout-outs in for them. So we start off with Eternal Napalm who resubscribed to the channel for the fourth month in a row and says, excited for another amazing exclusive tomorrow with Detroit Become Human. I think it's going to be stellar. I'm hearing great stuff about it. Well, listen, the thing is, I love Quantic Dream games. I just do. And even if they're not stellar, like, for example, Beyond Two Souls, a lot of people were very critical of that game. They said, you know what? Unlike Heavy Rain, the last game from Quantic Dream before that one, uh, it didn't really seem like your choices affected that much. I mean, there were major, maybe one or two major cutscenes or scenes that didn't even happen or changed because of your choices. And, of course, the ending. You can directly affect the ending in a big way. But that being said, um, it wasn't necessarily like you could get people, major characters killed. There was no major... You know what I mean? There was no insanely huge difference between what happened in the game dependent on your choices. And I do agree with that because I replayed it twice. And uh, knowing the, the different choices you know, and doing them... Yes, there were some scenes that were very different, but at the same time, there were some scenes that were, it didn't really overall affect the story that much. So I agree. But you know what? I loved playing Beyond Two Souls, and people loved the playthrough, even though it may not have been the most riveting, you know, story-changing dialogue or, or plot line if you did different choices. I still loved it. I get the feeling that Detroit Become Human will be that kind of game. It'll be a very fun playthrough for those watching on stream and on YouTube. So I certainly hope you guys will join me starting tomorrow for the fun. You know, tomorrow and then Sunday and then Monday. Three straight days of Detroit fun. And we're going to see how it goes. We're going to see what they've done with their next uh, outing. Okay? All right. Shout out to AES, who cheered and said, Are you ready for the Sims 4 expansion packs? Fun Factor will be higher than God of War, Spider-Man, and The Last of Us 2. Kappa. Yeah, if you guys can believe it, they're still exp uh, releasing expansion packs for The Sims 4. You may be saying, Huh? Yeah, I know. The Sims 4, didn't it come out in late 2015? I think it did. I think it was late fall of 2015. Um, here we are three years later. They still think people are actively going to play this game and buy the packs. Although, quite frankly, I thought they would keep making the packs if people weren't buying them. So there obviously is some kind of an installed customer base there that just by default buy everything Sims. But The Sims 4 was a huge disappointment for people who were fans of The Sims. And for me, playing it, I didn't really like it that much. I thought it was all right. But I wasn't, like, in love with it. Once I had played it once or twice and simulated, you know, a family and then kind of the offspring of the family, I was like, what else do I do here? You know, like, there's really nothing else going on in the game. It's not very interesting. After you do, like, one or two generations, there's nothing more to do. Of course, I'm sure if I had spent 400 extra dollars buying all the expansion packs, there'd be way more content in the game, but I just didn't see the point. I can't believe people are still talking about The Sims. I mean, I thought The Sims died with The Sims 4. With, you know, how poorly received it was. Uh, but apparently The Sims is still alive and well. They're probably making The Sims 5. <laughs> I always guarantee you they're making The Sims 5. Alright. Yolo Dopper cheer. He says, why is Nintendo focusing on things other than games like the Labo? I think they hoped the Labo would catch on like Amiibos, but they should really focus on games rather than being a toy company. Do you have any thoughts? Well, you, the, you guys already know if you've, if you've been a long-time viewer of mine. Yeah, I do believe that Nintendo should be focusing on making great games and real reasons to buy the Switch and have robust gameplay experiences with the Switch, not gimmicks to get a new audience to buy the Switch who normally wouldn't buy it, you know. The Labo is a failed experiment. If you guys have not heard the sales results, it was hilarious because even though the Labo 
sold a lot in Japan, they only sold through 30% of their stock. 30%. So they overproduced the hell out of this thing, thinking it was going to be a white-hot success. Everyone was going to buy this thing because it's a new, innovative gimmick from Nintendo that everyone must have. And in reality, people did not get fooled. You know, and, and the thing is, when you say, oh, only 30%, you got to realize that includes everyone who bought it to review it. So any YouTuber, any streamer, anyone who worked for gaming media who ran out and bought it, which is probably constitutes hundreds of people, if not more, you know, were part of that initial group. And they only sold 30% of their stock. <clears throat> so out there right now, and I know because I've seen it firsthand, there are shelves completely full of cardboard foldouts that are being sold for $70 and $80 because no one bought it. Um, I just went to my local Target a couple weeks ago, and the thing was like insane. It was a big area for it. The Nintendo Labo, they had their own, their own display, and the whole thing was full. Not a single one had been purchased. Now I'm looking at it like, what the fuck was Nintendo thinking? <laughs> like, why did they think this was going to sell? This is wild that they, you know... It's one thing if you're... Okay, you're going to sell little figurines that are collectibles and they could become like a viral thing. Folding cardboard is not fun. I'm sorry. You know, it's an art and craft thing. Some people like it. It's not a mainstream thing people enjoy. Um, Pretty ridiculous. So, that being said, uh, I'm not surprised that the Labo has been a failure so far. Um, it is what it is, I guess. We all made fun of it. Everyone, everyone laughed at me for making fun of it, yet it didn't sell. So figure that one out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've said this for years. I'll say it again. Yes, Nintendo is good at doing gimmicks, motion controls, stupid giant touch screens, a portable tablet of gaming instead of an actual home console. Oh, look, we can make cardboard that interacts with games. Oh, look, we have little figurines that you can scan and interact with games. That's all well and good, but you know, at the end of the day, you have to have good games. The good news is Nintendo does. You know, if Nintendo had all bad games, their system would not sell. But they make great first-party titles. We all know this. Mario Odyssey was my pick for Game of the Year 2017. So I think we all know, you know, that how I do truly feel about Nintendo. I love the games. Problem is, it gets so lost in the shuffle of all of their nonsense, right? And, you know, unless you're a hardcore fanboy of Nintendo who runs out and buys every little piece of everything they do to be a part of this inclusive culture... For being an outsider, it's kind of funny. You just kind of laugh at the, the silly stuff that they do and say, man, you know, I don't know what they were thinking here or there. Uh, but all that being said, all right, all that being said, um, we'll see what happens. Let's see what happens together, guys, moving forward with Nintendo. Let's see how they do. Um, I would love for Nintendo to be successful for the right reasons. Like, when I hear, oh, Nintendo sold a ridiculous amount of Mario Odyssey and made a lot of money. Great! That game's amazing. When I hear, oh, Nintendo can't sell games or consoles for shit, but they were saved because they sold Amiibos for two years, I say, that's bad. <laughs> you know? So let's see moving forward what they did. <clears throat> okay. AES cheered again. He said, are you going to try the Mario Tennis tournament on June 1st? It's free. Uh, no. I'm not getting Mario Tennis. I've never been a fan of the Mario Tennis series. I played it once ever, and I thought, wow, it's tennis. <laughs> Wow, it's tennis. It's fun to play against a friend, and I don't care about this game. So there you go. Um, Yeah, I don't care about Mario Tennis. It's just one of those games. It is a first-party Nintendo title. I'm sure it'll have a lot of attention to detail. It'll have a lot of production value. If you like tennis, you'll probably enjoy the game. I don't like tennis, so I probably am not going to be playing it, and I don't care about it. <clears throat> okay. Deluxe Swine... Did a 100-bit cheer and says, I've been a fan for a long time. I've refrained from cheering as often as I'm able to due to backlash at chat. Sometimes they give towards individuals who cheer frequently. It's uncomfortable when people start calling someone an attention whore for wanting to contribute towards the stream. Any thoughts? First of all, no one in the stream chat whatsoever should be doing that. And if there is someone who is being a jerk, you should call to the attention of the mods and the mods will take care of it. Because no one should be attacking other stream users, period, for any reason. So if you cheer and all of a sudden you get people messaging you and you get people, uh, you know, talking to you in stream chat negatively, oh, you're just a touch of whore. They're going to get moderated. That's fucked up. They shouldn't be doing that at all. All right. <clears throat> so that's number one. Number two, if you're getting harassed by people not in the stream chat, but just you're, you're getting random PMs or whatever. Yes, these are trolls. These are idiots who basically are attacking people who contribute on my streams. All you can do is ignore them. 
Uh, you can actually set them to ignore on Twitch so that you cannot see their private messages. You could turn off your whispers. There's a lot of things you can do. You could report them to Twitch and get them banned because if they do that and they harass you, they're breaking the terms of service of Twitch. And you should actively try to get them banned so they don't keep doing that to you and other people. All right. Um, but no, it's none of anyone's business. Who contributes to what? You know what I mean? It's not. It's none of anyone's business. If you go cheer anyone else's channel and you come cheer here, if you subscribe to someone else's channel or you subscribe here, if you tip someone else, you tip me, that's none of anyone's business at all. And no one has the right to criticize you or yell at you or call you names or insult you for doing it. It shouldn't. It's not a practice that's allowed, and I'm not going to stand up for it, all right? So it's very simple. Block these annoying people, and if they are doing it repeatedly in the stream chat itself, uh, you know, mod uh, notify a moderator... And the moderator will take care of it for you. All right? There you go. Easy peasy. Uh, Washington Sasquatch cheered and said, Detroit Become Human is getting bad reviews. Story is unbelievable and Marcus is boring. Delightful. Guess what? Beyond Two Souls got bad reviews and I loved it. So I don't give a shit what modern reviewers say about these games. I have enjoyed them. I'm going to play it at face value and I am not going to pull punches. If I do feel the game sucks, then I'll let you know. But if the game's good, then I'll also let you know. We'll find out firsthand starting tomorrow. This is why I don't wholeheartedly believe everything I hear from a reviewer. Uh, Sadella so cheered and said, Hoping H1Z1 works for you today. Well, so do I. Uh, obviously, I want the game to work. <laughs> I prefer if the game works. So that we can have fun. Because remember, keep in mind, not only am I going to play H1Z1 after I finish Yakuza 6 here on stream. Now, I'm going to try to play it again later tonight as well. So if this thing doesn't work, <clears throat> we're going to have a big dud of a stream today. Okay, um, Fred Flintstone cheer. He says, I'm watching this from work. Seems good. Nothing ever happens as a security guard. I look at computer screens all day anyways. Well, let's just hope that while you're watching my stream, uh, the, the Hamburglar doesn't sneak by your security camera and rob all the food from the Wendy's that you're, just, you're uh, defending there or whatever. <laughs> just, you know, be sure to do your job when you watch my streams. I do appreciate that you watch my stuff during the day. But be sure to actually do your job too, you know. Don't want to get you in trouble. <clears throat> okay. Jason Lee has cheered. He says, I'm worried about your Detroit playthrough. It's a story-heavy game. Your God of War 4 streams on Twitch had low views. What's to prevent that from happening with Detroit when it's even more story-based? It had nothing to do with it being story-based at all. Jason Lee, you missed the point. God of War was a huge, hyped game that received pretty much the most positive reviews of any game in like the past three years. It was insanely highly rated by advanced reviews, and everyone literally said, that's it, I'm playing it. There were people who only owned an Xbox One who ran out and bought a PS4 for the first time to play God of War, and people collectively played it together, all right, uh, basically all at the same time over the course of a week or two weeks for themselves and tried to stay away, at least my viewership, tried to stay away from spoilers on the internet and didn't really watch the streams, I'd say, for the first week that I played it because they didn't want to get spoiled on the game. I totally understand that, all right? I 100% understand that. Um, incidentally, though, my playthrough of God of War did incredibly well on YouTube. My views were up for a good week and a half. They were, like, you know, spike, huge spike, because God of War was so, so popular. People were watching it on demand at their own pace. They were playing the game themselves, then coming and watching my playthrough afterward on my YouTube channel. So it ended up evening out, even though the streams declined. YouTube went up temporarily, and therefore it kind of evened out and didn't really matter, all right? Um, in the case of Detroit Become Human, there's a couple factors here that are going to make it a little different. First of all, the game is totally narrative-based, all right? It's a short game, totally narrative-based. A lot of people don't go for that kind of game. They like to watch people play, but they don't necessarily want to buy the game themselves and spend $60 on a game you could beat within seven hours. I totally understand that. All right, in this day and age, you're looking for bang for your buck and replayability. Of course, Quantic Dream games do have a lot of replayability, but you know that being said, even I'll give you a perfect example. Cat, my girlfriend, was thinking about getting it, and she's like, "Yeah, but you know, sixty bucks, I'm gonna beat it in like eight hours, and I'm gonna maybe play it one more time for another five hours or whatever. I don't really want to drop that much money for a game I'm only gonna play that much when I just played God of War that I played for over twenty hours, right? And I got so much content out of it, I really don't want to drop money on a game like that." And there's a lot of people like that, and I, I, I totally understand that mindset. These are the people, all right, who are going to come watch my playthrough. That's that. Those are the people who are going to come and watch. Whether it's on demand on, on YouTube or they watch it live on Twitch, I don't know. 
I don't know how that's going to go. But in general, when I do live stream narrative-based games, people love it. I'll give you a perfect example, all right? Uh, Until Dawn, played that game a few years ago, and people loved it. They said it was one of the best playthroughs I ever did. They loved watching me live stream it. Um, and it was huge on stream and then huge on YouTube as well. Did really well. Um, am I saying Detroit Become Human is going to be huge? No, I don't know what's going to happen. I never know anymore. You know, sometimes you think what's going to go one way and it goes the other. Sometimes you think it's going to go bad and it goes good. Sometimes you think it's going to go good. It goes bad. I don't know. But what I'm hoping is at least I'm going to have this core group of people who absolutely love to see me play narrative based games who are going to join me live. And then those who maybe are playing the game by themselves, but want to see my reactions and my run, will watch it later on YouTube. Um, You know, there you go. So, we'll see. You know, traditionally, when I play Quantic Dream games, it goes really well. That's traditionally. We don't know. You never know if it's going to be consistent. But I like to stay positive and think, yeah, people have enjoyed this before. They'll enjoy this again. Okay? All right. Shout out to Jose Cuervo. Tip me a dollar and says, play the game. I am going to play the game. But I'm going to do a pre-stream first. And even though I do appreciate your dollar contribution, making demands on stream... Is not necessarily the best way to get me to finish up pre-stream early. In fact, because you did this dollar tip demanding that I, I get to the game, I'm now responding to it. And my response is actually taking up even more time on the pre-stream, forcing the gameplay to be pushed back even further. So in reality, while I'm analyzing your, your choice to actively tell me what to do on pre-stream, it seems to have been completely counterproductive for what you wanted. So perhaps maybe next time, leave a nice positive message instead of something swearing at me because the guy swore and I didn't read it, uh, and maybe do something a little bit nicer, and things will be a little bit more pleasant here on pre-stream rather than you making demands of me on pre-stream and then just delaying the, the what you know getting to the gameplay that you actually wanted to see to begin with. As you can see, now I've talked for two, three minutes about your thing, delaying the gameplay even further, so probably it was a bad idea to begin with. All right. And then shout out to AES, who cheered and said, Washington is talking out of his ass. Uh, Detroit is actually getting mostly positive reviews, but you're right, you play it and judge it for yourself. Yeah, see, there's the thing. Even though, in general, when, when a game gets overly positive or overly negative reviews, people seem to have this consensus opinion before they've ever touched the game, and this is why I hate advanced reviews. I've said it from the get-go. I don't think anyone should get advanced copies including the gaming media, including streamers, including YouTubers. No one should get advanced copies. Everyone should just have to play the game on release day. And, you know, if you are a person who's on the fence and not sold on a game yet, don't buy it on release day. We have some self-constraint, self-control. Wait a day or two for people who bought it on release day to tell you what they think and then make your judgment based off of that rather than hearing two weeks early that a game is good or bad and then there's a giant mob mentality about that game before the common gamer actually gets their hands on it and can give you a, re- a realistic uh, opinion on it. Um, you know, and there's games that are made or broken completely on pre-release reviews. And I don't like that at all. I think that it should not be based on that at all. That people should actually have intelligent opinions formulated about this, you know, based off of actual gameplay and things. Not, oh, one elitist guy got the game early, played it a week early. Oh, by the way, he wasn't allowed to give his true opinions on the game because of a review embargo. So basically, he just played the game without saying anything about it, really, uh, commentary at all, positive or negative on a stream. So everyone got hyped and said, oh, the game's great, right? In reality, it might be the worst game ever, but he wasn't able to say that because he had a pre-release copy. Or... You get reviewers who play games early. The game's not even online enabled yet, and the game has a major online component, and then they review it negatively, and then the game comes out and it's actually good, or vice versa. Sometimes games will be patched uh, before release, and the you know, things that people complain about in these early reviews don't even exist in the game anymore when you get it. That's why I hate this. I do. I hate this aspect, and I don't think it should exist. All right? So, in particular, in regards to Detroit, I'm going to approach it like I've always done games. I play at a face value. And I judge for myself. And then I share my opinion with you guys live on the fly, on the streams and in the videos, rather than believing what I hear from one person or another. All right? All right. Shout out to the captain of Salt, who cheers that I demand a full pre-stream stream. Well, we did give a full pre-stream stream. This isn't as long as some of the recent ones, though. And at the bottom line is it looks like we're about to be done. Oh, hold on. All right, Lekum just cheered. He says, I don't understand the logic. Can't people just watch the game on someone's stream and determine if it's good for themselves? I watched you play State of Decay 2. I realized it was a tedious mess before you gave your opinion on it. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. 
I don't understand the lot. Me personally, I don't understand the logic of why someone needs to get a game early to begin with. Because let's say, for example, I got State of Decay 2 a week early and I played it on stream. There's actually what's called a review embargo. Meaning if I played it a week early, I would not have been able to tell you while I was playing it, man, this really sucks. I literally couldn't say that. I, that would be breaking the review embargo and I'd get in trouble. All right. Now, when I was playing State of Decay 2 and I showed you all the aspects of the game, I was telling you, wow, this is good. This sucks. This is fun. This isn't. Because it was an honest, reactionary gameplay stream, which is all that I do. All right. So that's what I don't agree with. Or, again, these pre-release copies that come out to review, like, review sites and they're playing a game that's not finished because then there's a patch before the game comes out that fixes the issues they're complaining about. You know? So these release, these pre-release streams, pre-release copies have no purpose. They just either generate hype needlessly because the person can't be honest about the game they're playing or they generate reviews that might not even be legit. So why do we still have this practice? Uh, I'm so lost about it. <clears throat> you know, really stupid. In my opinion, it, it, it's just, I just don't understand it. Uh, again, pre-release copies are from a bygone era from when game developers needed to get their games out to magazines. Not before the era of the internet. They needed to get their games out to game magazine publishers so the magazines could create their articles, publish physically the paper magazine, ship it to stores, and have it on newsstands the day the game released. That's different from today when everyone could just fucking play the game on release and share it on the internet. There's no need for pre-release copies ever again. They serve no purpose besides artificial hype, built up for a game, and reviews that aren't necessarily accurate. So there you go. All right. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say. I don't think so. All right, guys. So, thank you very much for your support. Thank you for the cheer subs and tips so far uh, today on stream. As I said, we are starting with Yakuza. I will give you a shout out when I can during the conclusion of Yakuza. I don't know if I'll be able to do it immediately while you cheer sub or tip because these cutscenes can be insanely long at times. All right. Um, probably only have about an hour of Yakuza left. Once Yakuza is wrapped up, I will be taking a break and switching over the stream, the stream setup to be H1Z1. And then we do an H1Z1 for a while, okay? For the rest of the stream. So let's hope H1Z1 actually works uh, later today when I get to it. But for now, we're going to finish up Yakuza. I apologize for those who Yakuza is not your cup of tea. Normally, I would play this as a nighttime stream, but being there's only an hour left and I was stuck in a cutscene last night, I just want to wrap it up today. And then we can move on to other stuff. Okay, fair enough. Sound good? All right. Well, thank you guys for your support. I do appreciate it. Let's now end the pre-stream. Let's get uh, settled in here. And let's resume with Yakuza and finish up the game. All right. Thank you guys. And let's begin.